Beloved of the Lord, saints of the church, good morning and welcome to St. Mary the Virgin, digital service number seven. We are happy to have you. Pray that you will receive the blessing you have tuned in for. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Hymn 168. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Gloria.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. First reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, verses 22 to 31. And Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor, he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, and even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has, a, he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, be to God. God. The psalm appointed. The psalm this morning is Psalm 66. We'll be reading from verse 7 to verse 18. We'll read alternate verses. Bless our God, you people. Make the voice of his praise be heard. Who holds our soul in life, I will not allow our feet to slip. For you, O oh God, have proved us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let enemies ride over our head. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows, which I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you sacrifices of fat beasts with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I called out to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. If I had found evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed, Blessed be God, God who has, has rejected not rejected my prayer, prayer nor withheld his love from me. me. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Spirit as, as it was, was in the, the beginning, beginning, is now, and, and for, shall be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Second reading. I read from 1 Peter chapter 3, beginning at verse 13. Now who will arm you if you are eager to do what is good? 
But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good. Suffering should be God's will than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins, once for all the righteous for the unrighteous. In order to bring you to God, he was put to death in the flesh, but made it alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison. Who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons were saved through water and baptized, which this prefigured. Now save you not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience who has gone into the heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and power made subject to him. Here ended the reading. He is Lord 252. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John chapter 14, beginning at the 15th verse. Glory to Christ our Savior. Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. 
I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore. But you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ, O oh Lord. Our preacher this morning is our very own Sister Molly Walton, Church Army. Welcome, Sister Molly. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, be with us now as we look closely at what you have commanded us to do. Amen. The lessons for today highlight for us what Jesus requires, especially at this time in this pandemic. Today we have John's recording of what Jesus said. Then there is Paul speaking about what we should do if he really is what we say he is to us. Then there is Peter telling us how to go about living as a true follower of this Jesus. So many of the powerhouse saints addressing us today in this Easter season when we are celebrating the resurrected Messiah and looking forward to the celebration of his ascension. So using the very modern version by Eugene Peterson called The Message, we start with St. John who records for us Jesus saying, if you love me, show it by doing what I've told you to do. I will talk to the Father and he'll provide you another friend so that you will always have someone with you. This friend is the spirit of truth. You know him already because he has been staying with you and will even be in you. The NIV says, if you love me, keep my commandment. So, what is it that he has commanded us to do? He commanded before he ascended, as recorded by St. Matthew, another powerhouse talking to us, stating very clearly in chapter 28, Go ye therefore in all the world making disciples, with the reassurance that I will be with you to the very end of the age. A repetition of what we just heard from the John reading. How are we doing with this love for Jesus? This command generally known as the Great Commission, especially now that we have been presented with this great opportunity to show and tell people about Jesus and his saving grace at this time. Moving to St. Paul, his message shows us today how to do this. He shows that just any opportunity given to you can be used to share this gospel in word and deed. The message says, So Paul took his stand in the open space at the Areopagus and laid it out for them. It is plain to see that you Athenians take your religion seriously. I was fascinated with all the shrines I came across. And then I found one inscribed to the God nobody knows. I'm here to introduce you to this God so you can worship intelligently and know who you're dealing with. We meet people where they are. And so Paul in Athens used the environment to tell about Jesus, the God they didn't know. He shared with them who this God is. Another famous example of using any opportunity you have is the one in John chapter 4, the Samaritan woman at the well. Jesus used the topic of water to talk to her. Do you remember how she dropped the bucket and ran to tell others? So it shows we can use any conversation, any situation, 
even water and the environment to introduce Jesus to those who don't know him. Friends, look at the opportunities in your daily life and use it to tell the good news. And now we go to St. Peter. He encouraged persons saying, through thick and thin, keep your hearts at attention in adoration before Christ, your master. Be ready to speak up and tell anyone who asks why you're living the way you are and always with the utmost respect and courtesy. The NIV version states, be prepared to share the hope that you have. We have that hope and we need to share it with others. And if you weren't sharing it before, now is the time to do so. Are you prepared to share this hope at all times with others who have no hope? Christ is relying on you to share. What are the opportunities you have been given in the past and not used it? What are you prepared to do in the future? There's a story about Jesus returning to heaven after the resurrection and all the angels crowding around him like the star has just returned after winning the race in joyful celebration. He's here. But one senior angel standing by, she wasn't in the whole heap of giggly giggly going on. She said to him, so how did things go? Jesus replied, mission accomplished my girl. Still sounding very serious, she asked, do they know what this is about? Do they understand? Jesus said, yes, they understand. Then comes the big question. So what type of forward planning have you put in place? Where is the blueprint for going forward? Well, Jesus said confidently, I have trained a cohort of persons to carry the message all over the land and they are good representatives and will do a good job. The senior angel insisted again and what after they die? Jesus said very confidently again, they will teach and then the ones who follow will share and teach and it will go on and on like that from generation to generation till I return to get them. Don't worry, girl, no problem. Yes, he was in Jamaica for one of the rest stops. This is done, he ended. She was satisfied with the answer. He was confident that we would ensure everyone would know about him and his sacrifice until he returned. Well, the first disciples did their job, the early fathers did their job, and many saints to this day have been doing their job. How about you? And I, what are we doing? We have the opportunity to reach our friends, family, and co-workers. We have been handed a real chance to reach others, those who don't know him yet, in the shadow of the coronavirus pandemic. How are we doing now? A whole harvest of people in despair, dismay, disgruntled, disillusioned, diseased. They need you and they need me to show them Jesus, the only hope. I close with two verses of the song, King of Kings from the Hillsong group. And it says, and the morning that you rose, all of heaven held its breath till that stone was moved for good for the Lamb had conquered death, and the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe, for the souls of all who had come to the Father are restored. And the Church of Christ was born. Then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel, shall not faint. Let's join all the witnesses from the past to the saints who have carried this gospel let us be a part of this to carry the gospel because this gospel truth of old 
shall not kneel, it shall not faint. Amen. The Creed. I, I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Intercession Form H. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Page 123, the act of penitence. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The kingdom of God is justice, peace, and joy inspired by the Holy Spirit. They who thus serve Christ are acceptable to God and approved by others. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
I will offer to him 182. Through your goodness, Lord, we have this bread and wine to offer. The fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, they will become our spiritual food. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own do we give you. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us eternal life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Our souls will feast and be satisfied, and we will sing glad songs of praise to him.
page 267, our Easter post-communion prayer. We pray together. Giver of all, we are nourished with your Easter sacraments. Fill us with the spirit of love and unite us in faith that we may be witnesses to the resurrection and show your glory to all the world in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. 618. All our brothers and sisters who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, we pray God's abundant blessings will fall upon you. That your special day will be one of joy and exquisite delight. May God bless you. Bless your household. For those of us who have had our troubles multiplied, those of us who have illnesses and death in family, we pray God's comforting presence with you. That even as you journey through your cloud, that the sunshine of God's love will reach you and warm your heart and comfort you. May God in his love and his mercy lead you through the night of grieving into the sunshine of his love. Please bow your head for the blessing. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Notices and announcements.
Brothers and sisters in Christ, pleasant good morning. To those of you who are worshiping with us for the first time, a warm welcome to you. And when we get the chance to meet again in person, please come and see us at St. Mary's the Virgin Church. It's at the corner of Malines Road and Washington Boulevard. You can inquire about our other churches in our cure. I'd also like to announce that the St. Mary's of Virgin Production Studio presents to you the next in the series of Ministering to the Whole, a presentation by Dr. Alex Gardner titled Managing Your Mental Health During COVID-19. This will be broadcast on May 21 at 6 p.m. So see you there. That's May 21 at 6 p.m. Managing Your Mental Health During COVID-19 by Dr. Alex Gardner. See you there. Have a blessed and holy day. Let me take the opportunity to thank Ms. Diane Pottinger for a most excellent presentation on Thursday last. The ministry of this church is being recognized more and more. We want to thank you, Diane, for what you so wonderfully delivered. God bless you. God bless your household. Our recessional hymn, 400. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Our celebrant and preacher next week, Sunday, will be the Right Reverend Dr. Harold Daniel. We would normally be at healing conference but since we are secluded he has graciously consented to lead us on Sunday next please tune in 
what will be, I'm sure, a wonderful worship event. God bless you in the week ahead. God bless you.